guys, it's Julian, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to make music like Bicep. We're going to be talking specifically about the style, like their new track, Atlas. And yeah, as usual, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets, everything like that from this video. is available right at the top of the description, and if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there, because we're already available. And let's dive in. Alright guys, the first sound that we have here is the bass line. So you can hear it's a pretty straightforward bass line. It's following the chord progression. So yeah, you know, we're just doing like this A, C sharp, B, and then down to F sharp. Pretty straightforward there. And then what's happening is it's just jumping up the octaves for a few different notes. And there's also some notes in there like this E, which if you look, that C sharp minor chord that's playing there, that's just the second note from that. Like, you know, the bass line's not going to be that crazy. What you need to do is define the chord progression before writing the bass line and then essentially all you're trying to do is just make this like kind of bouncy pattern out of the chord progression like if you hear this with the kick it's essentially the intersection of the chord progression and like a melodic element and also just sort of like a bouncy rhythmic element and how that bounces off of the kick And yeah, and then for the sound with this one, so you can see it's a pretty straightforward sound. Now, it's made using two layers. We have a sine wave inside of operator, just for a bit more fatness in the low end. And then we have sort of like the main bass. So this bass is made using two saw waves. They're being detuned a little bit, and then that's going into a low pass filter which has an envelope on it, and then we're also using key tracking, which is something that's really good when you have a bass line like this that's bouncing across different octaves, because essentially what key tracking is, is it's like the higher the note you play on the keyboard, the more open the filter frequency is going to be. So, you can hear it makes this bass very dynamic because it's constantly bouncing around. Then we've got the amp envelope just set like that. And then I just have some vibrato and some unison. The unison's pretty important with this one. Like, with all the bicep synths in general, you're really just trying to get that big, fat, warm, analog style of synth sound. A unison on analog in particular works really well for that. Like, if I turn it off... You can hear it's a bit more kind of like, I guess, flat, you could say. But then when we add the unison... It gives us like that big chorusy mini moog type of feel. And then after that, the only effect we have on there, just on this bass at least, is just a high pass filter just to cut out the lows so that we can make room for the sub. And then I just have a bit of saturation on both of those at the same time. And yeah, so this one, you know, it's pretty simple. Again, it's just kind of like making a more bouncy pattern out of the chord progression. Then we have the pad. So the pad is playing the chord progression essentially. You can see we're doing... Same thing I showed you with the bass line. And then what's happening is all these extra notes here are just kind of like essentially melody notes. Like if you look at this like... Okay, so for example, we have like C sharp, which is the major third of that first chord. Then like, that's just like an octave of the second chord. We have a G sharp in there. Like, it's all just kind of notes that are in this scale, like this A major scale that we've been working in with this track. And since that is the key of this track, but like just kind of like, essentially, like I said, kind of creating a melody using the chords because... Like we have like this happening, but we also have, so it's like, yeah, you start with the root notes of your chords and then we're just adding these notes on top from the A major scale. Again, like pretty straightforward notes that are going to be in that scale and nothing 
too out of the ordinary there. But then it's just about how you add them and how you kind of create the melody over top of the chord progression. And I'll also talk about the chord progression while we're here as well. The progressions that you want to use with this style of stuff are actually pretty, like, poppy. If you think about it, like, in terms of, like, quote-unquote, like, Western pop music, like, these progressions are not really that out of the ordinary. Like, this... Like, a million pop songs that have been on the radio have used that same progression. So it's like, you really just want to get a handle on those types of chord progressions and how they work. And then you can kind of go and, like, you know, do more creative stuff on top of that to make this track work. But the thing about these progressions is that they're very, like, quote-unquote anthemic, you know, like... They're really powerful chord progressions, and that's really, like the big thing here is like this type of music is kind of like a combination between very beautiful melodics but also just like really good sound design and so that's how i try to think about it you know it's not just about making a chord progression it's about making a chord progression that's really beautiful and says a lot and then also using cool synth sounds and cool drums and stuff like that around it now for the sound with this one this is made with wavetable and so i was trying to create like a big fat like juno style pad you know i think these guys use a lot of analog gear in their music and typically if you're making this style of stuff you do want to use that but also like you can get that with synths inside of ableton so you can see we have two saw waves the second one is an octave up and they're detuned a little bit and then those are just going into a low pass filter which has this lfo on it and you hear the movement on that's really subtle. And that's what you want. This is all about like just creating that really slow moving thing in the background. That's kind of like shifting texture over the course of the track. So that's what that does. And then the last thing here inside the synth is we just have this classic unison. And then I just have a bit of reverb. You can see, yeah, it's pretty long. Obviously, you know, this is a pad. It works really well with these LFO pads because you get kind of like that, like as the filter's opening, you get like a big wash of reverb. Then we just have a bit of saturation to make this feel a bit warmer and a bit fatter and more analog. And then finally, we just have a high pass filter, which is cutting out the low end. And yeah, that's it for the pad. Then we have the lead. So, yeah, you can hear this is very similar to the lead from Atlas. I wanted to show you guys how to do it. I don't think anybody's broken this lead down on the internet yet. So I wanted to show you guys how it was made. And essentially, this lead is a really, really good combo of really good synth programming and automation, but also combining that with the melody and making it so that the melody kind of plays with the automation and what's happening in the actual synth sound. And it all comes together to make this sound. And that's something to keep in mind here. Like, this is very much the type of synth where you want to write the melody and then sort of design the patch around that rather than, you know, write, making sitting there for three hours, making a synth patch, and then trying to write a melody around it. Because you really, like with this, you really have to start with the melody. And I'll show you why. So, in terms of the actual melody notes, it's not that crazy. The main thing here is just the fact that it's, you know, very rapid. It's actually in a minor scale. Again, we're in A major. And if you look at this here, the starting note. Like, we're technically in C sharp minor, essentially. Although, it also fits into A major. So, that's the other thing. So, we're kind of writing this in a minor scale over top of a track that's in a major key. So, it's the very rapid fire notes plus the minor scale in a major key, but then also there's these stop and start kind of things happening where you get like you know, like you have some very fast type of notes, but then there's also these long held out notes. And so that's adding a lot because it's kind of like you're hearing this lead, which to most people, when they hear this, they're going to think, okay, this is a 
type of lead, and then all of a sudden it freezes. You know, it's like you're taking the sound. And for that little moment where it's going, what? Like that, you're kind of like pulling it apart and then putting it back together again once it comes back to the. Da -da 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 -da. That's kind of how I'm approaching it, at least. And yeah, you can hear it just, it does a lot for this lead. So it's those three things. It's sad, minor sounding scale, but over top of a major chord progression. Then having the constantly rapid firing notes, and then finally combining those rapid fire notes with the stop and start sort of feel. And you can see like, you know, it comes together. If you do all of those things, like that's, that's going to make this lead. Like it's not like, it's just this magic that you can never recreate or understand, you know? It's just that it's more so, like, just a little bit deeper, essentially. Like, it's a little bit deeper than just, oh, this is a cool super saw. And it's a, it goes into a little bit more, like, you have to kind of think on your own, like, how you can make something deeper like this in your own tracks. Now, for the sound, it's actually a pretty simple sound, but then it all comes down to the automation. You can see we just have one saw wave, and then it's going into a low-pass filter, and then what's happening is... We're automating the filter envelope amount and then also the attack of the filter envelope. So you can see that's how we get that to kind of go what like that on those longer held out notes. It's just taking the attack on analog of the filter envelope and then just making it go down like that. And then in terms of the filter envelope automation, you can see that one's actually really, really small. Like, it's just doing a little tiny little, like, yeah, you can see that, like, just goes down a little bit and then goes back up. But it's very, very subtle. And really what this comes down to is the envelope amount, especially with analog, is just a very sensitive thing. Like, when you're automating that, you kind of just want to, like, be very delicate with it. So we're just doing a little tiny bit of automation on that one. And then that's really all that it needs. But it's a really, really subtle thing. It's making a big difference. Because you hear it kind of get a little bit more chill. And then it opens back up again with that filter envelope getting bigger there. So yeah, just kind of like keeping that in mind. And then there's also this reverse key tracking here, actually. So as the notes get higher, the filter's actually getting a little bit more closed, essentially. And this is what I mean by like the synth sound and the automation coming together with the melody, because it's essentially like the automation that we're doing here and what like the synth is actually doing is just serving the purpose and serving the story that we're already trying to tell with the melody. So that's how you want to approach it. Now after that we just have the amp envelope like this. I have a bit of vibrato. You can see yeah it's very fast. Pretty good amount of it as well. Definitely adds a lot with the sound. And then finally we just have this glide where you can see yeah we have the glide turned on. I have it on the monophonic setting and we're using that glide mode so this just makes it so any note that you play it's just gonna slide you get that like super portamento gliding lead like that and that's the last thing that's really important for this sound there's something about it that just doesn't feel as futuristic when you don't have that glide on there Then, after that, it's really simple. You know, we just have a little bit of echo, not a whole lot. You can see this on the ping pong setting. We have a shorter reverb as well. And then just some drum bus to fatten it up and make it sound really warm. And that's the lead. So yeah, I want to show you guys how to make that lead. Again, when you're making your own leads, like, it's not just about copying this. But think about the ideas here. Think about how you can make a lead where you have a really good, compelling melody. And then the synth sound is helping to tell that story. And it's sort of working together with the melody to create something really exciting. And yeah, then after that we have the break, which sounds like this. My fan just fell, that scared me. So yeah, what's happening here is essentially we have like a drum and bass break beat. 
And then we're using these other sounds to beef it up because this on its own, even if we get rid of the filtering, you know, it can be a bit messy trying to use a break beat like this. So the way you do it is you start, chop up the break, you know, get it in the pattern you want. Like in this case, you can see on the actual break beat, we have a bit of processing as well. There's some drum bus and then this high pass filter after it to cut out the lows. And then also before it, we're high passing because it makes the saturation a bit cleaner with drum bus. So what you do is you make that pattern and then like I said, these other sounds here just sort of serve to beef that up and fill it out. And really, the main two things that you're going to want to beef up are going to be the kick and then the snare. So that's what we have here. So you can see like we just have this really fat 909 kick. Again, kind of going back to the more like analog synthesis sounds. And that's just going through a bit of saturation. And then we have this drum and bass rim shot. Which you can hear is really great because it's super mid-rangey. It's really got that like <laughs> right in the mid-range. It's also being layered with this hi-hat. And you can hear when we put that in with the breakbeat. It makes that snare just like smack perfectly. So that's what you want to do when you're making these types of breakbeats and you're trying to think of the sounds to layer it. Like you don't always just want to get the biggest snare that you would use on its own. You're thinking about like how this kick and snare are going to add to what's already happening in the breakbeat. I can see like when you hear it all together, it sounds very full and very nice, but it's really not that hard to do. You just have to go through, pick out the breakbeat, get that chopped up how you want it, you know, process it, cut out the low end, and then just find like, you know, like a really fat rim shot. And just like a good 909 or 808 kick underneath it to fill out that kick. And the hi-hat really just adds like some nice high-end to things. You know, it's one of those things, it's kind of just like background, but it adds a lot. And yeah, and then the last thing we have down here are the vocals. So it's just like these big atmospheric like oh, very much like the type of vocals like you hear in like tracks like glue and you know like these were really popular back in the day with a lot of the classic rave stuff that bicep were referencing and yeah they just work really well because they add something really atmospheric and really ethereal <laughs> They don't really take up too, too much space. Like, they can still really fit in well around all these synths. And yeah, you can hear what they really do. Like, it just adds a lot to the track melodically. And so these really, you know, you just have to kind of find the samples. I recommend you look at like, you know, different older records. Like look at the records that Bias Step have sampled. There's a lot of different sample packs where you can get vocals like these. You know, you just want that like, oh, like all that big, like almost like classical type of vocal. You know, it almost reminds me of like opera or something. And yeah, so that is going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project file, samples, MIDI, presets. Everything from this video is available right at the top of the description. So definitely go check that out. If you want to learn how this is made, you know, maybe you just want this lead. Or you just want to take, like, just the break beat. Or maybe you want the whole thing to take apart and follow along with the video. You can literally get this entire project file, all the samples, MIDI, the presets, all of that right in the top of the description. And it really helps to support me as well. <laughs> Plus, you just get this great project file to work with. And yeah, thank you so much for all the support recently, guys. And I will see you tomorrow with another video.